So it turns out that the best way to improve the economics associated with wind is to make the turbines larger. So try to get more megawatts out of each turbine uh, per a dollar of uh, capital investment that you have. And if you look at the turbines today, they're already monsters. So this is a 1.5 megawatt replica. A real world 1.5 megawatt machine, this tower is about 100 meters, which is about 100 yards, which is about the length of a football field. Each one of these blades is about 37 meters long, which is about 37 yards long, which is almost the half the length of a football field. So overall, this rotating structure, that's 70 meters or about 70 yards, about 70% of a football field in length. So huge challenges. Each one of these blades today weighs about six tons. So you have three blades, six tons each, 18 tons of rotating blades. There's another 18 tons of rotating structure within that nacelle comprised of drive chain and, uh, and uh, generator. So what are the challenges as you go forward? You heard uh, John's presentation today showing that the next generation is going to be larger. So you saw that you know, we have a 1.5 megawatt machine, we have a 2.5 megawatt machine on the books, we have a 3.6 megawatt offshore machine, and you saw the future saying 5 to 7 megawatts. What's going to happen? As you go to 5 to 7 megawatts, let's pick 6 megawatts, these things are going to become ginormous. <laughs> so if you look at the blades today, this is 37 meters. It's going to go to 70 meters on a 6 megawatt machine. Each blade today is 6 tons. It's going to go to 24 tons on a 6 megawatt machine. So huge challenge in getting 24 tons times 3 plus rotating structure at the top of a thin tube uh, you know, to stay stable. So what are we doing about it? This is a cross-section of one of the blades today. So what you can see is it's actually fairly aerodynamic. It's hollow. Uh, you can see that uh, it's got a good structure. About 20% of the weight of this blade is skin. So all this stuff that you see right here is skin. That's only 20%. Most of the weight is this root right here and this load-bearing structure in the middle, which looks like an I-beam. So what are some of the things that we can do? As we take this blade from a 1.5 megawatt machine to a 6 megawatt machine, and this blade gets larger, I said it's going to go from 6 tons to 24 tons. Uh, we need to take a lot of weight out so that we can stabilize this structure. Uh, one of the things that we can do is addressing some of this load-bearing structure in the middle. The top of that load-bearing structure is called a spar cap, and this is what we use today. This is essentially a fiberglass element with some um, uh, uh, resin uh, epoxy that's been impregnated into it. And I'm going to pass this around. You can feel it. It's a fairly heavy structure. So we have, is, again, layers of this, uh, of this fiberglass sheet with this epoxy resin. One of the things that we're trying to do is to replace that spar cap element only. That's only the top of this I-beam structure. We want to replace that with this lighter weight carbon fiber material. And I apologize that it's not in the same form factor. But if we, put, if we replace that spar cap material today with this lightweight carbon fiber composite material, the overall weight of that blade is going to drop by 25%. So we're going to take it 6 megawatts, uh, six, uh, 24, um, 24 ton blade, it's going to go down to about 17 tons, just from changing that one element to this carbon fiber material. So advanced materials is always a huge element for, um, uh, for the work that we're doing here. I mean, the dollars uh, associated with uh, the capital investment are, are significantly higher per megawatt uh, than, than what you see today. So if you look at some of the smaller things, it's more like you know $9,000 a kilowatt. These are closer to $1,000 a kilowatt. So the economics get significantly better as the size goes up.